We'll start with the system information module, which is one of the most robust and diverse modules in the OS Forensics Toolkit. At first glance, it may just appear to be a, just a straightforward, simple feature to use. You know, you, you choose a scan from the preset list of available scans and click Go, uh, and that's all there is to it to start using it. This is a great way to get valuable system information from a live machine, such as when you would be running OS Forensics from a USB to triage a live system. But it also has functionality when investigating this from another machine or a forensic disk image. So let's look at the uh, available default list of scans. There is the basic DOS commands option, the basic system information option, the system information from registry option, a bitlocker detection, and the recover bitlocker keys option, Python scripts, and then there's an all commands option as well. Keep in mind that the majority of the presets are intended for live system analysis only and so will not be compatible with forensic images. For offline use, for you know attached drives or those forensic images, the system information from registry preset will obtain similar system information from various locations throughout the registry. Here's a brief look at the scan results of running the system information from registry scan. You'll get information like computer name, time zone information, network information, all the user account details which are very important, connected printers, and more. The BitLocker detection scan will scan all mounted devices on the local system for the presence of any that may be encrypted with Windows BitLocker. This is useful for those processing a live machine with an OS Forensics USB as you can determine whether or not the system drive or any attachments are encrypted with BitLocker. If a BitLocker device is identified and currently in an unlocked state, OS Forensics can acquire the BitLocker recovery key from the system by running the bit or the by running the Recover BitLockers uh, Keys Scan. Here we see the output of the BitLocker Recovery Scan. You will notice that any BitLocker devices will be highlighted in blue and any non-BitLockered encrypted devices will be highlighted in yellow. This simply helps direct the user to the most relevant information as quickly as possible. In addition to the default preset scans, OS Forensics users have the ability to create their own preset scans and even run some third-party tools and, cu and custom scripting. From the System Information module, click the Edit button to open the List Management window. From here, you can create your own scans from the default list of available commands that are built into OS Forensics or you can add your own. Earlier in the course we talked about the different directories and files that are created when you install OS Forensics. One of them is the sysinfo tools folder located at the file path displayed here in this slide. Here you can place the executables of third-party command line tools things such as registry ripper, uh, volatility, encrypted disk detector, etc. can all be placed here in this directory location. Once your executables have been placed in the appropriate folder, you can then add the necessary scripts associated uh, with that program uh, to use with that program within the system information module. This slide shows the difference in creating a new list, title, or name, and then how to add new commands or scripts to the available commands list. This is something that you can continuously add to and which will be there for you each case going forward so long as you didn't accidentally delete or damage the config.osfcg file we discussed earlier in the course.
Here's the first of several more examples to come of the two ways to export or store the scan results from most of OS Forensics automated scans. The export to case will in essence create a bookmark to be included in your final report and export to file will create an immediate HTML report of just that returned information that you're viewing and prompt you where to save it. This may be more useful in a live analysis scenario where you may be out in the field processing a live machine and needing to collect specific information and may not be uh, interested in building a full report of files and artifacts of interest to your examination. 